You probably didn't get to use this drug in the ICU, so let's talk about succinylcholine, one of the first drugs you'll get familiar with in CRNA school. Succinylcholine is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. What on earth does that mean? Succinylcholine works at the neuromuscular junction on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. It is very structurally similar to acetylcholine, so it actually mimics the way that our body's natural acetylcholine works. This means that when succinylcholine binds to the nicotinic receptors, it actually causes an initial depolarization and therefore contraction of the muscle cell. Unlike spontaneous movement, these initial contractions occur all throughout the body and are called fasciculations. It actually can be a little bit jarring the first time you see it. Your patient might have lots of twitching, facial grimacing, kind of like twitching all over. Sometimes people think it's seizure-like activity the first time they see it, but don't worry, it is normal and it will pass in a few moments. Compared to acetylcholine, the breakdown of succinylcholine is very slow. This leads to a sustained ongoing depolarization of the receptor ion channels. This means that the membrane doesn't have a chance to repolarize polarize or reset and therefore it can't respond to any further signals for muscle movement. So your body's own natural acetylcholine doesn't have the opportunity to trigger a new contraction. As a result, your patient will have a temporary neuromuscular blockade in in plain English meaning paralysis. This makes succinylcholine perfect for a rapid sequence intubation, especially in patients who are at a high risk for aspiration. But it's not for everyone. Succinylcholine should be avoided in any patient who is at an increased risk for upregulation of the nicotinic receptors, meaning anyone with with prolonged immobility, a spinal cord injury, massive skeletal muscle injuries like a crush injury, for example, a recent burn, a recent stroke. Any of these conditions can cause more nicotinic receptors to be available to bind. And if too many receptors in the body get depolarized at once, this can actually cause a temporary hyperkalemia, but it can be life-threatening. For this reason, we also avoid it in patients with hyperkalemia, and it's important to know that this drug can also trigger malignant hyperthermia in patients who are susceptible. So definitely avoid it in anyone with a family history. Fasciculations can also cause a temporary increase in ICP or intraocular pressure, so avoid it in patients with a high ICP or a globe injury. It can also cause bradycardia, especially in our pediatric patients, so have your atropine ready. At the end of the day, succinylcholine is a fantastic tool for RSI, anyone with a high aspiration risk, but you definitely need to know how the neuromuscular junction works at an in-depth level. That way you can understand who not to give this drug to rather than just memorizing lists that's easy to forget. Check out our in-depth train of four monitoring lecture in Confident Care Academy to get to know this better and we'll see you there.